Before the mid-60s, Americans had never heard the term SUV, but the Ford Motor Company changed all that. In 1966, the new Bronco was an instant hit when it first rolled off the assembly line. Now, a group of craftsmen in this small shop is looking to rekindle that 50-year-old spark. They're building a Bronco that looks just like the original, but has all modern-day technology underneath. If they do it right, they'll revive an American legend. Welcome to Tulsa, Oklahoma, a city once called the oil capital of the world. It's a town that was built on hard work and determination, and that's just what we see inside this unassuming shop on the east side. This is the headquarters of brand new muscle car, and what we see here is so very Tulsa, a group of individuals with the vision and the passion to make that dream into a reality. Okay guys, we got a new project. I appreciate you guys coming over and everybody's really busy. This time though, we're gonna build something a little bit different. I got the feeling that one is not for the Mustang, right? No, Martin, it's not a Mustang. Check it out, guys. How about we build a Ford Bronco? What do you think? Looks pretty good, huh? So what we're doing is something a little bit different. Normally we do muscle cars, all makes of models, sometimes some trucks, but this time we're gonna build a Bronco, sort of a brand new muscle truck, if you will. Really, really a nice car, as if Ford was still building these things today. Okay, you guys ready to build a Bronco? Man, yeah, let's build a Bronco, something different. Here's what we're doing. 66 Bronco. Um, isn't it gonna be bigger than that? It will be. Faith. If not, we're already done, so <laughs> send it to the customer. You like it? Oh. Another thing done? <laughs> Another thing done. Got us a schedule, check it out. Six month build, pretty straightforward. Same basic steps as a lot of times. There's the real concept photos, you wanna look at those? We're going black, except what we're gonna do is we're gonna build it like a new car. So Coyote motor, Tremec transmission, nice suspension, big wheels and tires. How big wheels and tires? 33s. Nice. Two and a half inch lift, 33s. What are we gonna do on the interior? Full leather interior like a car. Oh, wow. Blow it out like, like what if Ford did the Bronco? What color are you going to go with the black? Some kind of tan. Like a real... Tan leather? Right, yeah. Yeah, very, very nice. Stereo system, power everything. Yeah, you know, the Broncos good. had the one little gauge. Yeah. And all the gauges were in it. You couldn't hardly read it. Now, are we getting a new dash that comes blank? I already bought a blank steel dash. Nice, okay. So Martin can lay it out, put a full set of gauges in it. Like, honestly, like I think it should have. Customer pick out the wheels. I love them. What do you think? They're bronze. Yeah, they'll look good on the black. Yeah, uh, well, you know what else would look good? The row bar being no. bronze. That's a lot of bronze. Come on, man. I'm with you on accenting some bronze in. But the row bar. But the emblem's bronze. I mean, okay, the emblem's. Little touches, little accents. So what about the grill? Maybe the grill. We're not putting chrome on this, are we? Uh, not really. Very little. What would look really good is if we could not paint the grill the bronze, but accent, accent it all. Like where it says Ford. Right, do your emblem, do your headlight bezels, do your grill bezel. What about, what about around the yeah. headlight bezels? Yeah, do the headlight bezels. What about that chrome piece that goes all the way around it? Do that too, and just kind of highlight it in there. And especially if we do the Ford emblem yeah. in the bronze, that'd really probably just pop it off. But the yeah. roll bar, bronze. No. Think about Troy. it. No. What if we have Troy do, yeah, no. roll bar, no. What about, <laughs> what about Troy doing a little pinstriping? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Something nice. To keep it clean, like around the Bronco emblems on the side, yeah. do something around. Something custom. Right. Yeah. Maybe some bronze on the row bar, maybe pinstripe bronze. Stop on top of the row bar. That's too much, man, that's huge. The concept, it's got the four person roll bar, but let's do the sport one. Let's yeah, do I like that one better. You know, and we're, and we're gonna cut the windows off. Make it a roadster. You oh, shave the doors? Shave the doors, make it nice. So full-time convertible. Full-time convertible. I hope he has a garage. Yeah, he's going to off-road. Okay. Yeah. We want to drive really nice in the street, but also off-road. What yeah. about the underneath of it? Say undercoat? I mean, since it's going to be a four-wheel drive. Big bedline, right? I say let's let's bedline it. Off-road vehicle. He's really going to use it. Yeah. Uh, at the end, instead of taking the car to the track, let's take it outside. 
Let's get in the mud, oh, jump yeah. some hills, drive through some trees. Yeah, or over trees. In my mind, I see the coyote motor, blah, and all four wheels are throwing mud. Right. Okay. <laughs> That's what I want to see. That's the gear I drive in right there. Yeah, just right up your alley, man. You guys, I mean, everybody here drives a truck except Martin. Yeah. You put in wood? Yeah, so I'm thinking carpet in the front. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, wood in the back, like an old Chevy truck. Okay. Do that in the back, even go up the tailgate on the inside, make it nice. Stain you know, it, we, you know what we could do with that? Yeah, in the past we've clear coated these, sand them down, clear coat them, sand them down, clear coat them, buff them. Wood bed. Yeah, we've done it. That we'll do that again. That'll look really right. good. All right, you ready to build a Bronco? Go build a Bronco. All right. You guys go out there. I got to call and order the bronze paint for the row bar. No. no. We're just getting started here in Tulsa, so don't go anywhere. The bodywork crew has some major work ahead of them. And where do brand new first generation Bronco bodies come from? Well, we'll show you next. At Silver Sport Transmissions, we believe classic cars and trucks look their best on the open road and four wheel drives belong on the trail. We continue to innovate and develop the best overdrive transmission packages for muscle cars, street rods, classic trucks, and four-wheel drive vehicles. Our commitment to customer service and integrity is second to none. When the wrenches begin to turn, Silver Sport Transmissions is there. Hit the trail with Silver Sport Transmissions. Brand new muscle car Classic Bronco is brought to you by Rust Release. The safe industrial strength rust remover that works. Kicker Performance Audio. Living loud. And by Tom's Bronco Parts. The largest inventory around of 66 to 77 for Bronco Parts and accessories. Welcome back to Tulsa, Oklahoma, where the brand new muscle car crew is about to get started on a six month journey. They're revitalizing a 50 year old Ford Bronco and making it drive like a modern day vehicle. The body came from a donor Bronco, an original 66 Roadster. But this is the prototype for all brand new muscle car Broncos to come. For Mustang bodies, the guys have turned to R3 performance products for years. And now they lean on R3's experience to help create brand new Broncos. It's something I've had a passion for for a long time. I have uh, love Mustangs. I love building cars. I got involved with a couple of guys that wanted to do the same thing. So about four years ago, we decided we're going to start building Mustang bodies, then went into suspension. Now we're ventured off into some other bodies that we build and we're licensed to build. So that's how it kind of started. We bought a ton of old classic Mustangs, coupes, convertibles, and fastbacks. We sourced them all throughout the United States, and we just scanned all the cars, came up with measurements that we thought would work as an average to use on all of our cars. The Bronco came about with brand new muscle car, a phone call from David Miller, I need a Bronco. The Bronco market's hot right now. We recondition a lot of cars, whether they be Broncos, Mustangs, Camaros, Chevelles. It's just what we do, so the Bronco is easy. When we first started this, primary market was restoration shops. But we found now that we're into this a few years, we have a ton of garage warriors that are just building cars. And they don't want to take a car that they buy on eBay or find on Craigslist that's a big block four speed car or some numbers matching car and chop it all up, put new school suspension on it, put a coyote motor in it or whatever they're going to put in. They don't want to do that. They want to start with something new. When you buy a car from us, it's very simple. You know what you're getting. You're getting a straight, brand new car. There's no guesswork. You don't have to put a bid on it on eBay and hope to God that when it gets to your house, your facility, it's what it's supposed to be. I guess we take the stress out of purchasing a foundation for your build. The crew has already painted the body hot rod black, just like the factory did back in the 1960s. It serves as a primer to protect from corrosion, and since the owner is going to take it off road, the crew is adding an extra layer of protection on the bottom, a textured spray on bed liner, just like the kind that's used in pickup truck beds. How far up are we going to go? I've got an idea of how far up that we're going to go. I wouldn't I mean, want to bedline the, the engine compartment because no, it won't look good. I'm wanting to go right go to the that line. seam. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think the other Do we want to go right here? Right yeah, the beam. Yeah, yeah, the beam. Or here. The beam. Yeah. No, the beam. The beam. Okay. That's the what beam. I was thinking. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah because, because you got a nice shiny. The only reason why I was saying right here is because these tires are Bug. big and it's going to it's gonna rock chip this.
I was there. thinking about doing it right here. Right there to the bottom. Right here, yeah. here, here. And then it'll be shiny here shiny and headline there. there. This, this better paint. We got to get with Richard because there's a, there's a couple of inches of that that have come off to fit a Coyote motor. Obviously, in some instances, we're putting new engines or new drivetrains in old cars. Well, it might be a bolt-on for, say, a brand new Mustang or a brand new Camaro or whatever. Well, putting it in a 60s model car, it's a little different. I've been looking at this and, and I don't think it's going to fit. I think we're going to have to do some cutting. Okay. So I think we need to do some measuring. Yeah, go measure, before, see how much. Before we do start doing any cutting. Both sides or just one side? I think we can get away with just that side. Okay. Is it closer to that side? Well, the whole thing is offset that way for a Bronco. Oh, okay. So Frank. I think we'll be able to just cut that one side and we'll be good. Okay. Okay. You look good in there. Stay for a while. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to be about 30 inches. So yeah, it's pretty wide. Wow. And that's the same one that's in the T-Bird? Yep, same one. Same, same one. dimensions at yeah, least? Because it looks good. bigger. Same one yeah. that's in the bullet. So is that wider than a Ford small block? Oh yeah, by a bunch. What about like an FE, like a big block? Yeah, it's, it's wider. Still wider? It's wider than an FE, yeah. it's a Those are big motors. It's a big motor, guys. So is it going to fit? I got three. Oh, the little work. I mean, you fit in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I'm on fire today. So, <laughs> it's a good one, too. Good inches, so. 30? Right at 30, Ooh. so yeah, we're going to have to take some of this out. If you go down there, it gets the narrow, bottom, yeah. If we go all the way to the bottom, we're at about 28. So yeah, when you take about an inch and a half way. or so, yeah. Usually sometimes it's really small and sometimes it's really big stuff. You know, like putting a coyote motor in a little Bronco, like what we're doing right now, it won't fit. You literally have to cut the inner fender wells out a little bit on each side to get the clearance. I'd I mean, make it symmetrical, man. It just yeah. freaks me out. Yeah, me too. Or if With those big wheels and tires and stuff, we can also create some Let's sort some of a rubber, rubber mud flaps mud flap or splash shields. shields. Or, make, or make new pieces that go from here down to the frame because there's a pretty big gap. Right. Yeah. This only took it out of the metal and make this line right here and yeah. cut it right there. Do the bolt-on brackets on the engine bolt into the frame? Yeah, but sometimes the stuff around it, around that bolt-on part, they get in the way. You have to move stuff around. You have to modify it. You have to make it work. We got to leave something over here because I got to attach wiring harness, heater hoses, ignition system. Well, I know that we're, that's step 400 and we're on step two, but if we put some rubber down there, is it going to mess with the tires? Yeah. Nah. It's going to look cool. Yep. It's going to look awesome. Yeah, it's going to be a full engine bay for sure. Yeah, it's a full engine bay now. <laughs> okay, okay. No, no, no. One, two, three. Bronco! Bronco! Ooh, I always got to do the last part. Of no. When we come back, it's time to get to work. The bodywork crew descends upon the Bronco, and that means it's up to Martin to lead the way. Stay tuned. At Silver Sport Transmissions, we believe classic cars and trucks look their best on the open road, and four-wheel drives belong on the trail. We continue to innovate and develop the best overdrive transmission packages for muscle cars, street rods, classic trucks, and four-wheel drive vehicles. Our commitment to customer service and integrity is second to none. When the wrenches begin to turn, Silver Sport Transmissions is there. Hit the trail with Silver Sport Transmissions. Learn more about the Ford Bronco story in Todd Zerker's new book. Get your copy of Ford Bronco, a history of Ford's legendary 4x4 at cartechbooks.com and at popular retailers in store and online. There were three versions offered when the Bronco was introduced in 1966. The Roadster, which was a bare bones, no frills model, it didn't come with the top, often just had two seats in it, fiberglass door inserts in it so it didn't have hard doors on it. It was like a Jeep CJ5 and that was used probably by a lot of agricultural type uses. Then there was the sports utility, which was a short, what we call now a half cab, like a Bronco pickup. You saw those used by hunters and fishermen and also by dealerships and service stations where you might use it as a runabout in a business. And then the wagon, which sold the most, and the wagon was then a full top and you could get a back seat in it and two bucket seats or a bench seat. That was the most popular, that was probably used most by families. The Roadster probably seemed like a pretty good idea, fun in the sun running around California, that type of thing. I think people, though, quickly realized that they wanted something with a little more weather protection. So that first year, they sold 
4,000 roasters. The second year they sold 698, and the third year they sold only 212. That showed Ford pretty quickly that this market, even though it might look like a lot of fun in the ads, real life is often a little different. You want a roof over your head and maybe some doors and windows that roll up. There were a lot of the roadsters actually had doors and tops added to them just so they could be sold. First step in most of our projects, pretty much 90% of them, get the body, get it up, get it on a rotisserie, flip it so we can get to the bottom easily, and then prep it, meaning sand it usually, and then seam seal it, because we gotta seal up the panels where the panels naturally meet, seal it up, keep the water out, the air out, the noise. It's the proper way to prep a bottom. Sometimes people don't want it because they're trying to replicate a certain thing from the past, but if they leave it up to us, we're gonna seam seal the bottom. In this case, bed line it, but usually paint it and seal it up nice and tight. Tony? Yes, sir. So let's turn around and start to see the, the plan. Make it right now and cool. Rock and roll. Martin and Tony are good together. They're a really good team. It is son-in-law and father-in-law, which is kind of, you think might be kind of interesting, but it works along great. They act like professionals at work. You know, they don't bring that stuff to work together, but they do a great job. They can kind of finish each other's sentences. So they know what the other person's thinking. They've been doing this together for years and it, it, it's a good team. Brains and brawn. I'm waiting for the Wi-Fi to connect right now. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just now starting to train some new folks to work with them, so hopefully we can replicate that. We need more Tonys. Most of my job is being a body man, but whenever I can, I also try to, you know, help people guide through some body work, like, uh, as for example, you guys will see Michelle and you guys will see Gilbert, and we're trying to teach them, so I try to be the best teacher that I can, but at times I still go back with Martin. So I'm kind of like an all-around type guy where you could trust if you need to help with anything. If I could help you, I will. If I can, I'm pretty sure we, we could find a solution or somebody could help us out. Now that body's going to need major surgery to accommodate the enormous engine and tires it's getting, and that's where Michelle pitches in to help. When we return, the Bronco goes under the knife. Plus, we give you a little history lesson on the fabulous first generation of Ford's famous 4x4. At Silver Sport Transmissions, we believe classic cars and trucks look their best on the open road, and four-wheel drives belong on the trail. We continue to innovate and develop the best overdrive transmission packages for muscle cars, street rods, classic trucks, and four-wheel drive vehicles. Our commitment to customer service and integrity is second to none. When the wrenches begin to turn, Silver Sport Transmissions is there. Hit the trail with Silver Sport Transmissions. Brand new muscle car, Classic Bronco, is brought to you by Wild Horses 4x4. Isn't it time you answered the call of the wild? Rhino Hitch, the most versatile, adjustable hitch on the market. And by No Limit Engineering. We build them, we drive them, and we test them. The sport utility vehicle, simply known as the SUV. Americans bought 17 million of them in 2018, nearly half of all vehicles sold in America. But it wasn't always that way. In fact, up until the 1960s, the SUV didn't even exist. Just the Jeeps that were carryovers from World War II. As those Jeep owners got older, they enjoyed the versatility of their vehicles, but they craved something a little more refined. Enter the Ford Bronco. In 1966, Bronco was introduced as the vehicle that could go nearly anywhere and do nearly everything. Americans were smitten and a legend was born. When the Bronco came into play, you know, it was popular right off the bat um, in 66. I think the design was basically like a 1962 Ford pickup, just shortened up. Basically, the very simple vehicle. I don't know what it is about the Bronco. It's like the best of a car and a truck. It really was ahead of its time because it's the wheelbase and maneuverability. You can get it through the woods, go hunting with it, go camping with it, and that's really how the SUV craze started. Bronco's in stock form versus Jeep or International Scout had the proper suspension to start with. They had coil spring front end and they would walk in the washboard. It runs a Ford 9 inch rear end, which NASCAR runs every Sunday afternoon on the track. It's the same rear ends under every one of these Broncos. The components, they're bulletproof. And people that don't know Broncos still love the Bronco. And it's just a, kind of a neat thing. You can't pull in anywhere and somebody doesn't have a Bronco story for you. I just think they look awesome. It's small, but it's big and it goes places and it's powerful. They're just a great 
method of creating wonderful memories for your life, and I think that's what Broncos really help you do. Bronco owners are clearly passionate about their favorite 4x4, and every year thousands of them get together to commune in everything Bronco. The annual Bronco Super Celebration is the largest gathering of early Broncos on the planet. This event is about the celebration of the Ford Bronco. I want them, first of all, to understand what a great vehicle they have. I mean, we're all obsessed and we're all enthusiasts of the Ford Bronco. So it can't sit in the garage. You got to get it out. You have to enjoy it. And there's no better place to enjoy it than the Great Smoky Mountains of Tennessee. I want them to have family fun, find their parts, and just to have a great weekend of camaraderie with the other warped people like themselves that understand how great the Ford Bronco is. This event started 13 years ago. There was a big Ford event that asked us to be the special mark for the 40th anniversary of the Bronco. Wanted us to get 15 Broncos out there to be the special mark of the big Ford event. My wife Donna and I, when we opened the gate at 7 o'clock in the morning, we had 218 Broncos lined up. We had advertised it in the magazine and we had people from everywhere lined up wanting to be part of this Bronco Day. And from that, it's kind of just taken on a life of its own. You're going to have about five to 600 Broncos that will show up and then you're probably going to get three to 5,000 people walking up to look at the Broncos. It encapsulates family, fun, and Ford and put their good horses to work. This brand new muscle car Bronco will be a dedicated roadster, but with a couple of twists that'll set it apart from the original. It'll eventually have doors, which Martin and Tony will add later. And Michelle and Martin work to make room for the enormous Coyote engine that'll go under the hood. The biggest change, cutting the fender wells to accommodate the huge 33 inch off-road tires. One of the things that surprised me about this build, and I knew we were gonna cut the rear fenders because that's what people do. They put flares, put big tires on, they cut the rear fenders, or quarters if you wanna call them that. But I was really surprised it was six or seven inches. I didn't measure it, but it was big. It feels a little weird for body guys. I actually asked Tony, have you ever cut that much metal off a quarter in your life? And he said no. And it, it was a little weird, but it looks good. Richard, now you think you tie your fit? You put in a tractor? Tires yeah. or something like that. Oh, okay. Yeah, Jim. You know, you know the song. She thinks my tractor's sexy. Uh huh. Yeah, that's no, Bronco. That's <laughs> Bronco. Oh, okay. She thinks my Bronco's sexy. Yeah. Next time on Brand New Muscle Car, the paint guys get their first crack at the Bronco, and shocks and suspension give this legendary vehicle a revolutionary ride. Bronco. 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 One, two. I'll see you later. Ah! <laughs>